Hello, my name is Michael Garcia, and in this video I'll be talking about how to make the three-wire mod, the three-wired uh, USB to PlayStation communication cable. Um, later in this video, I'll be putting on my old video that I made, which goes into detail about how to make the Net Eurosi compatible USB cable. Um, the two are similar, and uh, except the three-wire mod is a lot easier, and the hardware for it is a lot cheaper obviously um, but um, yeah in that video I, I go into detail so if if you're curious how how to connect the wires or how to find the wires and find which which are which that video goes into more detail and that's coming up after this one so um, if you're not aware the the serial um, cable is made using the PlayStation link cables so you, you basically get a link cable and you chop it in half and that's pretty much it and then you get the USB um, the USB end is usually called USB to serial or TTL has a few names but we'll get to it um, oh, and by the way the the two cables so the net Eurosi USB cable the three wire USB cable and even the original net Eurosi cable that plugs into the DB9 um, they're all compatible with with um, NoPS. NoPS is a PC side program, so it runs on your computer that sends and receives to and from the PlayStation. Um, so all the cables are compatible with it. Um, on the PlayStation end, if you're using NoPS, you need UniROM. UniROM is um, either a, you either burn it onto a CD-ROM and boot from it. Um, to boot a UniROM, you either need a modded PlayStation, so chipped, a chipped PlayStation, or um, you can use the new um, MemHack, which is a memory card that that's preloaded with a hack that bypasses um, the PlayStation security, which lets you boot into um, a CDR, which is what UniROM is. Or alternatively, if you have a... Um, um, a cheat cart or an action replay or game shark cartridge that plugs into the back of the PlayStation on a in a parallel port you can flash it um, I recommend flashing it if you have one it that way when you just turn it on it it's on um, but yeah um, the reason to use no PS is basically because it's very fast um, and it has a lot of features so by features I mean you can download so you can download memory, um, VRAM, you can download memory card um, slots or the whole image I think. So it's got and you can upload as well you can peek and poke into registers and uh, I, it'd be great when it has um, like a, rem or a remote debugger that would be ideal but at this stage I think it's still a work in progress but that's yeah that's the software end um, to make the actual cables, um, I first heard of the three uh, wired mod through this site, and they go into a bit of detail using two cables, uh, sorry, two boards in, s in particular, the FTDI. So they've they've got a cheap FTDI, and they've got an expensive Arduino, which is a bit weird, but anyway, we'll get to that. So this is the cheap um, FTDI board. I say it's cheap because. I, I bought one it's almost identical to this one um, and this is not a micro USB it's a it's a mini USB so if you have a PS3 that uses a um, USB mini to charge the controllers and that's what that is um, you can use this actually I think to make a net Eurosi compatible board because the the pins from the FTDI is broken out onto the breakout board but we'll get to that. Um, so the three wire mod is pretty simple. It's basically the send, transmit, and receive, and ground, and that's pretty much it. And you just mirror them to the board. So the, on the board you've got receive, it attaches to the PlayStation, transmit, and then you've got the receive, which attaches to the board's um, transmit, and then you've got ground to ground, and that's all it is. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, I, I soldered mine, but um, I, the easier way would be just to get these plugs on, um, and 
and just yeah I, and tape it down and that's it now all these boards have something in common and they I think they must be 3.3 volts I say I think because every time I've tried a 5 volt board it just fails um, so only 3.3 volts work for me and, and I'm saying only for me because in my experience that's all I have I, I, I'm not an expert at this so I'm just going by what I know and what I know is none of the boards that have anything 5 volts that you can't change to 3.3 volts it w won't work um, so this is I found this is an expensive Arduino board I've got two Arduino boards two cheap ones and I've tried doing this um, again it's the same thing so you've got transmit on the board which maps to receive on the PlayStation end um, which I believe by this diagram is 8 and um, receive uh, transmit on the PlayStation end is 5 I assume maps to receive on the on the board and basically it's, it's the same thing in ground to ground um, it's the same thing um, now uh, these boards must have 3.3 volts like I said if not then I don't think they'll I don't think it'll work and I've had this this is one that I've had for ages it's a TTL programmer um, and I've had it for a while so I tried it and I just for the life of me I couldn't get the jumpers figured out um, I could send in three volts and it worked fine but I couldn't receive I couldn't receive and no PS I think at the end before it launches the executable in the PlayStation memory sends a signal to the computer and because this thing couldn't receive it was locked to five volts um, it just wouldn't run but that's my experience uh, I'm sure I, I'm sure it was just me not knowing the configuration I tried everything but I, I just couldn't get it to work it's a shame because the chipset that's on these things um, I even have the same chipset that's on um, a USB to DB, DB9 serial converter which I actually use on a real net Eurozy cable actually works but anyway that that thumb did this one I couldn't get it working so anyway it's a shame because it's a very old well not very old but it's relatively old enough that Windows XP knows what it is without installing anything which I think is great um, but yeah um, I'm not saying that it's a bad I'm not saying it's a bad chip um, just yeah just I don't know buy it and test I guess um, this is another one that I haven't bought Pimeroni are, are great I follow their stuff they make great stuff <laughs> uh, I'm in Australia and they send to Australia very quick um, their prices are reasonably priced um, yeah anyway the good thing about this is that it's it's a cable so if you don't know how to solder um, you get you get something like this that's in a cable form so again USB to UART or USB TTL or USB yeah, it's serial that's what you're after and if yeah like I said if you don't know how to solder you just get something that's in a cable and then you just cut the wires and then you cut the wires on the the PlayStation link cable and you pretty much twist the right wires together tape them up and hey presto it's done so yeah um, and this is like I said I haven't bought this but um, looking at the the spec sheet so down here but the the spec sheet and looking at the spec sheet like um, there's two things I look for and that's the 3.3 volt um, regulator the switch or um, something that transmit and, and receives in 3.3 volts and another thing that's even better to look for is um, is the board rate so anything that supports a board rate higher of what the the standard 11.5 the 11.52k kilo board whatever yeah so this I, like I said I haven't bought it but no doubt I think this will work fine and if you don't have soldering experience this yeah you just find the cables y yeah the right cables twist them together and that's it it's done um, anyway um, so this is a, an FTDI sorry for the image uh, it's a horrible image anyway FTDI it's got the switch um, and this is a mini USB 
um, this is just a generic China. It doesn't even have a breakouts. It's just what's on the the, the head, the bre the pen. yeah. So and on here the Raspberry Pi zero Pico, yeah, not the zero the Pico. The Pico is a cheap board, so cheap. Actually, these both cost a, I think ten dollars each. Yeah, uh, amazing. And the Pico is actually a pretty impressive kit for what it is. Um, um, so yeah, it's got a boot select button. Um, I'll be mentioning that later. So let's get started. Um, so there's GPO 0, 1, and 2. Sorry, 0 is up here, 1, and 2. They're the only three um, holes that you'll need for the three wire mod. So the, th the Pico doesn't have um, software that runs it natively it has to be flashed to my knowledge so this is what you do you flash it onto it well you I found this and you just download it you click here and this is where you download it it's a UF2 that's apparently the the firmware image so you download the UF2 file okay and then you hold down the boot select button on the Pico while plugging it into the PC and then that automatically changes the Pico into like a thumb drive. A thumb, it changes it to a thumb drive d device. And then you drag and drop that UF2 in, uh, firmware onto the device. And then that will uh, automatically reboot. It'll automatically install the firmware and reboot. So when it reboots, it'll be automatically a USB to serial adapter. Okay. Um, so this is. I go into more detail in later in the video, but um, so what I do, I, I list eight, the eight wires. Um, to my knowledge, all cables have eight wires, even the cheap Chinese clone cables also have eight wires. But anyway, what you do is um, you, you're trying to map the, the wires to a color, and then once you know the color, then you can just connect, associate them with, um, with the, the functions. So the function is the port. So port one, I uh, can't remember. Well, it, it's RTS on this cable. Um, the yeah. So uh, yeah, ground, transmit and receive. Um, so because they're serial cables, um, when you chop them, you, you'll have two ends, and the two ends will have different um, transmit and receive colors so one end will have this um, yeah so receive is brown on this cable and then brown on this cable is transmit so um, I'm using one cable for each of these devices okay so yeah and originally I had the same as per this one down here and then realized oh, it, it has to be flipped so yeah it has to be swapped so this is end on this one I'm I've called it N1 on this device on the FTD board, FTDI board and on this on the Pico end I called it N2 but yeah so um, and they're just twisted on um, and I tested it like I didn't want to make this permanent um, so I just thought, oh, I wonder if I can do it without soldering. So I twisted it on and yeah, I mean, it works. This is a micro USB, by the way, um, which is better than the mini USBs, which are hard to find the cables now. Uh, the Pico has actually two onboard serial devices, USB to serial UART devices. Um, you, you'd probably be just using uh, the zero the one, the one that I show, starting from zero, one and two, the GPOs is zero. So a, so when you, when you're sending and receiving, you want to use that device, the zero device. <coughs> um, so, I recently came across a board that looks like this. Um, but this is not it. This is even cheaper still. It so, this one, this one's good because it looks like it has all the. Um, the breakout of the FTDI chip to actually make the Net Eurosi um, USB cable. 
um, but this one obviously doesn't um, and I'm, I'm not going to wire anything directly to the chip I don't have the skill for it but again what you want to see is something that has a 3.3 volt and 5 volt switch so you can switch it um, a horrible photo sorry <laughs> um, so yeah here what I'm showing is so you want RX, RXD so the D stands for data and t TX so TX and RX and then ground and switch it to 3 volts and that's pretty much it so the back of it pretty much says it again if you if you want to solder straight to the the solder joints um, so yeah this is before I before I swapped it so the that's obviously wrong with the two different cables like I said in later in the video I explain how to get the mapping and how to find the the pin to the color to the function the, I should say the port to the to the pin on the cable yeah um, so this is me just doing it and it's pretty poor oh, it's just horrible um, so I'm just making sure I've got everything in check and then I start priming and and yeah that's pretty bad but you know what it it works so I, I tape it up with tape to shield it a bit even more tape and even more tape um, but it works and uh, again this is a mini USB so which is you know, like I said pain in the ass but it works it, it, it works fine um, so the net Eurosi cable um, has more wiring because the net Eurosi cable has like I said handshaking and things like that um, and I came across this one and this one looks like the same one that they those guys on that website used um, and looking at the breakout what what they've and like it's so cheap um, I, the FTDI uh, board that I used was I think it was forty dollars delivered so yeah now this looks fine except for one thing and that's this okay RSD should not be <laughs> so okay here I put RSD is DSR and how you figure that out is you get you get the spec sheet of the FTDI try and, and get the correct one so here I've got the FT232RL FT232RL so and what what you do is you follow the pins if you're not sure you just follow it to the pins and then you count one two three four five six okay and there's the number one chip uh, pin pin one is here pin one is here and I counted from the bottom so one two three four five six DSR so that RSD should be DSR according to, to this now I bought two of these I haven't tested it I haven't built it yet but yeah and and again these these are um, and they make it hard to tell but these are uh, USB minis not USB micro or C for that matter but anyway um, the next video is me going through how to make the USB uh, net Eurosi compatible video um, the cable sorry um, which is these two up here um, I'll go through making the bottom one in a lot of detail and it's pretty long so let's get to it Hello, my name is Michael Garcia and um, I'll be talking about how to make a USB to PlayStation serial communication cable. So if you clicked on this video you probably know what what this is all about. Um, for me it was mostly to replace this, the Net Erosi serial communication. I didn't need to because in 2006 I was already using it for um, and in 
in the 90s as well. Um, so yeah, in 2006 I was using it on my modern PC. Uh, thankfully it has a serial port, <laughs> which worked very well in, in DOSBox. Um, but out of curiosity I wanted to see if it, if it could work in USB. Um, so I made this in 2018, this green one. Um, it, I called this uh, the old, the old, because it had a, a cache converter sticker on this. This is the the new, the new cable which I just made yesterday. Um, and anyway, in this video, I'll I'll be showing both. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to have a drink. Okay, so let's let's get on. Okay, so why would you want to make this cable? Uh, basically, it's really easy to make. It's only uh, seven wires to solder, so which is pretty easy. It's cheap in comparison to the Action Replay or Game Shark, because you'll need version three because anything older than a version three, like a version one or version two, to communicate to it requires a a com a comms card. I've got one from back in the day, but it's an ISA card. I think they made them for PCI, but anyway, it's a void, I think. Uh, it's a lot faster, uh, and I think you can do a lot more with it, but this is so much easier. Anyway, um, this is the the main reason why I still use uh, the NetEurosi cable, and I'm using this one now, um, but um, this, is, this is the most the advantage of, of using it is the remote debugger. It's uh, basically a step debugger. The similar to the Linux, it's probably exactly the same as the Linux GDB. Um, it's a great, it's a pretty powerful debugger for what it is. You can set breaks, you can set um, variable changes. I've used it not often because it's a lot easier just emulating. But sometimes there's you, you can't step debug in an emulator, to my knowledge, anyway. So when I get really stuck, I have used it a few handful of times. But that anyway, um, that's a nice to have. Um, it's also com um, compatible with the PSXE, the native PlayStation format. So not using the Eurozy um, library stuff. Um, so that that includes um, sending via PSX serial and QPSX serial. Um, I haven't used this. But making this is compatible with both. It's just a matter of um, updating the the USB side of um, the FTDI chip. I think. Uh, anyway, we'll get to that. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm just having a drink of beer and just talking on our Sunday afternoon. So it could get a bit ranty, but um, most of it will be up front. So and later. Um, I'll I'll go I'll talk through the video of when I did the the second one. So, if, um, all right, and also nothing beats testing on real hardware. That's true. Uh, testing on hardware is a pain in the ass, but it has to be done. If you're not testing on hardware, it's you're depending on the emulators, and the emulators are, are great. Um, but but there's always things that that can go go wrong testing on emulators, and then testing on hardware it's not the same it, it, it doesn't perform or it crashes there's a lot of things that can go wrong when when developing on just emulators um, in fact this is I'm doing this video mostly for a friend who's helping me out with the, the net Eurozy site who um, who creates the the net the huge net Eurozy uh, ISO images um, yeah so hopefully it'll encourage him to, to make one um, so let's Next slide. Yes, do at your own risk. I'm not an electrical engineer. My soldering is horrible, to say the least. To say the least. But I mean, that's how you get better is by doing more. Um, I wouldn't say this is probably a a, a novice project, but it's not that hard either. Um, but you'll see. Okay, so Dan Hands Dan Hands forty two uh, is the man. Uh, so this was written in two thousand thirteen. Like I said, I had the Yaros cable, the Yorosi cable, so I didn't really need this. Um, but I was more curious. Um, don't contact me asking me if I can make one. I, I, I can't. I really can't. Um, I'm, yeah. But um, 
he can he does and for what he's charging I don't know I mean this is 2013 maybe the price is in a, a, a different now but I mean yeah it's it's worth the money if you plan on developing for for PlayStation and I recommend it it's it's really retro it's fixed point maths which is always interesting but apart from that it's pretty fairly modern sending GPU packets is yeah fairly modern and the audio is fairly modern as well um, so if you're not planning on using for uh, the place to, uh, the net Eurozy, you can use uh, all th th this is what you can use on it the PSX serial the QPSX serial um, PSX card link is I think something that you can access mem memory cards directly from using the a, to a computer to uh, the PlayStation the BIOS dumper I assume it's just uh, ROM dumper I'm not familiar with it uh, so yeah only seven wires to solder um, I'll be going through I've always used the same board um, but we'll get to that so this is um, PSX dev dot net um, so Dan Han 42 um, wrote out like a quick little tutorial which is great it's I mean I didn't think I'd be able to do it but um, all you need is uh, the com the the PlayStation comlink cable sorry the it's not a comlink yeah I think it is called a comlink cable um, yeah uh, what else um, yep the FTDI module it, it has to be FTDI um, I don't know any other way of doing it and it has to have the handshaking all the all the handshaking lines which are all these if it doesn't have it then it's no good um, because well at least for the net Eurozy, it needs to flip to invert these um, this is the program I use because I'm in Linux so I just downloaded it and compiled it um, we'll get to that you need technically you don't need a meter you can get um, like a circuit tester with a light bulb or a buzzer and that'll work just fine you need a soldering iron I don't think it, could, it can be done without it and uh, yeah, a lot of patience um, so here he breaks down the the colors and the port numbers I'll explain more of that um, and here he assigns the the ports to their their functions I call these functions um, and then yeah he connects the PlayStation side to the FTDI side which is this um, yeah so I also did that um, and and that's the net Eurozy in way to invert it um, you can do it on on Windows as he explains down here um, yeah and then you need to set your environment um, which works fine as well on uh, well, I use DOSBox so I think everyone uses DOS, DOSBox these days um, so um, I found this one and obviously it doesn't have all the the breakout the, the serial line breakouts as, as he comments um, and then I found this one um, this I've used this one twice now so back in 2018 this is what I used and what I reordered and did it yesterday and it's it's very easy very very easy um, so I'll go through the the mapping I call this mapping so from the PlayStation side to the the FTDI side um, I do want to read this okay so this is from my old 2008 when I did it um, so first I cut the cable into equal pieces I don't bother testing them before cutting too much hassle and the test below is plenty proof they work next figure out which end is 1 and which end is 8 um, I'll have a diagram with this uh, the parallel port on the left side is 1 so the pin on the left side is 1 and the AV plug side is right uh, is 8 so that pin is 8 uh, my meter is low on battery but it's set to beep on connection so that's all I'm using the meter for is um, to test uh, connectivity it just beeps I wrap a, a wrap a wire around the red test pole and use a clip to hold it down while I find the pin in the plug. It's dodgy but worked. In the image above, the plug is upside down, but the pins are still the same. One is on the left and eight is on the right. I do this on the video, um, and I'll, I'll talk through it 
there. I tested the pins this way it's easier. Make sure to only tap make sure to tap only a single pin wire in the plug when finding the connections. I tested all lines in the plug while counting. I did all pins just in case of a short. You should only hear the beep on a single line. I did this as well on the video uh, on my new one and and also test to make sure it does hasn't earthed. Uh, remember one line pin 7 isn't connected. Mine is red. It was the first one I tested and I freaked out. Uh, I twisted up the tested wires out of the way. I've got a photo of this. I mapped out the two ends and the first end I called sticker old which is my green one which I did in 2018 because it had a cash converter sticker on it and the other one I called new which is the one I used just yesterday. Next to confirm it's correct using Dan Han's 42 table of connections that's above. I'll go through it in more detail later. Using the left side I wrote the I wrote the function so this is on a pad. I recommend doing it um, just to make sure you're doing it right because if you wire up the wrong cable uh, it's it's not good um, and these boards aren't cheap um, I think it was like 30 something Australian dollars so yeah um, using the left side I wrote the function uh, meaning the what it what that line does a first cable on the left RTS and followed the color green so to the right and wrote CTS so the colors the colors don't represent anything it's a it's a lot easier to visually see when you're doing it so I recommend writing the colors um, for yourself but when you see my diagrams don't don't read into the colors because obviously you're not wiring them but when you're wiring it use the colors if that makes sense um, actually um, when you cut it one end of one end will have completely different wiring to the other because um, the serial cable um, swaps them I think I'm not exactly 100% sure on where but yeah they're swapped somewhere so one end won't have the same colors as the other uh, well, I mean they're all probably the same but it'll have different features it'll uh, a different function it'll be in a different position is what I'm trying to say um, so yes uh, the other thing the other thing as well uh, which I kind of missed was uh, the stupid question by reverting by reverting the inverting so the net user uses the inverting um, so if you don't apply it um, is it compatible with the PSX serial and he does reply um, yes here yeah. you're only inverting the handshake lines handshaking lines which PSX serial doesn't use so it works with both so if you don't apply the net Eurozy inverting it, um, you can use it for the, the non net Eurozy so the parallel port is here the AV port is here this is one and well, up to eight number seven is empty or not used I'm not 100% sure but that's the back of the PlayStation um, and that's that's pretty simple um, so uh, number one so yeah what he's saying here is first um, using a multimeter write down the colors and the port numbers and then just add the the function so the functions here won't change one will always be RTS but your color may change um, and so on um, and then what you do is you map one um, to uh, the FTDI so this is on the board uh, I'll, I'll show you here so here um, again the colors are only helpful when when you're soldering it so you can visually see that you're connecting to the right colors um, the port numbers here is what's most important um, so you yeah, one to eight um, and there's nine um, holes here um, so that's what I do on my video I just count down um, so here so it's just the same image flipped around so here you can see one goes to CTS this is like a visual representation of of that that table that Dan had that Dan hands has two is ground I put it here because ground here is a bit crowded um, and then number three um, number four 
So usually I do this pre pre soldering. Uh, so in my video you can see me. Um, uh, yeah, you can see a pre pre soldered and then soldering. So this is in 2018. This is what I meant by getting a clip and just holding the the tester on a wire, and then with with the two hands just um, testing the pins in the the serial cable. So this is what I meant by um, upside down. Um, so this is pin one. Whether it's whether it's the right way here, it's still pin one. So that's what I meant. It's just easier to get the um, the 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 need the 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 tester needle thing, whatever it's called. The um, yeah, just to get it in there, it's easier. Um, just yeah, test all of them. So what you do is you test this, um, and you if if it's if it's the first one, it'll go beep, and then you go there there. Just testing all of it, and then the chassis, just to make sure there's no shorts, and then you write down. You write down, um, so um, yeah. So pin one, you write yellow or whatever. Um, it looks like I don't know what. Oh, I must have just gone. Yeah. So because I pinned down a cable, so I'm only testing one. So I'm trying to find the color, how what color, what pin represents to the color. So that's what I'm doing. So the first one I did was yellow. I pinned it. And then I just went through all the all the pins trying to find yellow, so like that, or a short. So it's important to check for shorts as well. Um, I had just yesterday that cable had a had a short. The funny thing is it only shorted after I made it, so I'm not sure what happened there. But anyway, um, so that's 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 the important part. Also, an important part is to make sure that you find. Yeah, the the wire. So I I tested as I tested, I just rolled them up out of the way, and so here I've only got two left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and I guess I found red. Yep, there's red, which is um, seven. Okay, so here um, uh, the PlayStation port one to eight. Um, here I'm rearranging the colors. Yeah, so. Here I found um, the so I was testing the colors to find the port, and here I just rearrange it in, in port order. So from one to eight, I can see the colors. Like I said, the, the colors here aren't important um, because, you, you, like I said, even on the other end, um, it, the colors are wrong. Uh, actually, if you're gonna do it, give yourself a bit more a bit more um, room here with the wires, the cables should be a bit longer and that's way too long, you don't need that much you'll see it when I when I do it okay so here I've, I've mapped the old cable and the new cable the new cable, so the, it's the same cable just different ends, the old had that kind of grotty sticker look to it, This this the new looks like a new cable um, so yeah so one is green and here it, one was grey. Uh, you don't have to do it, I don't know why I did it, but anyway. This is what I was working with in 2018, um, so it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> and that's it, it's not pretty. Um, mine came automatically with a 3.3 volt set. Um, I th think Dan Hans 42 mentioned that it works with 5 volts as well, but I set it to 3.3, and it's already set at that anyway. So, um, yeah, it's not pretty. Um, uh, here, just make sure that there's no shorts. Um, yeah, I, my soldering's gotten a, gotten a bit better, but not by much. Um, yeah, so not pretty. So I soldered both ends. I didn't do that. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I'll go through it, but it, it did work, so as you can see it's not pretty, but it worked. And I've been using it a long time and it hasn't failed, so it still works. Then what I do is I tape it up, um, so that's me starting to tape out. Um, I was super paranoid, that ain't coming out, but it's yeah, not a really good connection. Um, 
you're meant to heat up the wire and I didn't do that because I had a shitty soldering iron but yep yeah, that's me taping it up again and that's the finished thing I just keep taping 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 until it feels solid I guess um, because the solders are so huge um, yeah when you squishy you don't want to feel the solder so it's got a, a bit of tape on it um, but yeah it works fine um, I don't recommend removing the USB micro cable out and I just yeah just leave it okay so this is the net Eurosy side of um, the, uh, the the firmware so it needs to be inverted this is on Linux this is um, it's, um, uh, to install synaptics I think it's called to install um, uh, the supporting the supporting drive um, libraries for it, so it needs this library. When you when you when you install this library, it includes a bunch of other development USB dev libraries. So um, and then you download. I'll put a link in the description. Um, you need this program. Dan links to it as well on his blog post. Um, so it's you download it. It's a simple C with a make file. You just compile it, and um, you get this program. So you you, you plug in the the USB cable um, into the um, into the breakout board, and you run this, and it basically gives you um, so all the inverted uh, not set. Um, so with the net eraser, you want it set. So how you do that is you give this command, which Dan explains as well so you, you're telling it to invert and it dumps it okay and then once you've done that you unplug it and then plug it back in and you test it and you should get the exact same so that's how you test it just dash dash dump okay so this is the new cable that I'm working on I've had I've bought new tools since then um, but it's pretty much the same process, that's how it came in the bag, that's what it is um, FT232R, it's a breakout um, so basically it breaks out all the serial uh, connections and it has some functionality regarding the inverting of signals this is the other end, so this is the new end, it looks a lot cleaner um, uh, yeah, make sure it's a data US micro USB cable because they make them they make cables now that are not data. It's just power, as in to charge. So that's important, and make sure it's a good working one. Um, yeah, some uh, some can get pretty faulty, and you don't yeah you don't want to debug this when it turned out to be a micro USB cable. So this is stuff I've gotten um, since then. Um, yeah, it helps a lot. Um, I recommend getting a workstation, uh, so uh, a soldering station. I mean, um, uh, it helps a lot. Um, just suggest as a suggestion, keep it low until you need it because these can burn out pretty quick if you keep them on high all the time. Um, I'm still, this is still relatively new to me, so I didn't have it high enough and. It wasn't melting the the wires. Um, so this is my kitchen table. I I use it, but I put a lot of paper. Uh, this is the same multimeter that I used. It still works. Uh, the wire stripper didn't really work, but the wire cutters you can strip the wires with a wire cutter. Just don't squeeze too hard. So this is the end product, I guess, of the of what I did yesterday. Um, I, in the video I go through how I did this and you can see it's pretty much exactly um, how I did it in 2018 so it's video time okay so um, this is me just streaming back the, the cable, the video gets better, this is yeah, it's pretty bad um, I did this realizing not realizing that there's only uh, seven cables there, but um, not including the earth cable. I must have counted the earth cable. Dumb. Anyway, um, I'm missing the brown cable. So that's yeah, and the wire cutter. The wires are two 
it's it's too small. This is a cheap wire cutter, so maybe with a good wire cutter, it'd be able to strip it just fine. Um, so that that wasn't helpful. So this with the wire cutters, you can cut them. Just be careful not to actually cut the wires. Um, you can use like a cigarette lighter or um, even the side of a, a soldering iron as well. Will melt it, and you just kind of strip it that way. Um, let's see if I cut this one. I did cut one and I had to, well obviously I need to needed to start again because I still don't have brown. So let's get to that. Uh, yeah, so missing brown. So I started testing and then I, I started writing and I realized, oh wait, I'm missing brown. But this is how I test. Um, uh, the next video kind of is a lot better quality. So I, I cut it cut it back, there's the brown um, so I'm just stripping stripping the wire back I'm trying to in hindsight I should have stripped it a bit more because it's pretty close to the to the board um, but it's no big deal so okay so now I'm set so what I'm doing different um, this time around is I've got an, a few little gizmos. Um, this is a, I forget what it's called. It's like a clamp, a wire, a little clip, a, a wire clip, I guess. I kind of kind of broke it, but I just use it to hold things. Um, so what I'm writing here: parallel port. This is the back of the PlayStation. This is the AV. This is one to eight. So SIO is um, uh, serial IO. So here I'm writing one and then an 8 so that so when you turn it upside down you, you can kind of see that oh, do I turn it upside down anyway yeah so it, it's the one pin always stays one so now I'm turning turning this to to connection mode so that's the clip so I'm clipping it on the yellow wire it's a lot easier this way um, than what I was doing in 2018 with with a clamp. So, and then all I once it's clamped, I've got audio. It just beeps, and that's that's all I'm doing is just testing individual pins, and um, and just writing writing the color. Like I said, the the color is important when you're just wiring. So, but after you wired it, it the color is irrelevant. So I'm testing brown. So you can see the meter kind of. So it was, it was eight. So brown. So basically, you just do that for the for the whole eight cables. Yeah. So. So here, so once I'm finished, uh, I recommend you do this as well, just to make sure you kind of know what you're doing. So this this will always be the same, um, 
and then this is and again this will always be the same as well what will be different are the, the different colors and the ports obviously the same um, so yeah on this is the FTDI USB side this is what so you'll be connecting the gray to the CTS so here what I'm doing is um, I'm looking at Dan's table so um, how he maps the RTS is what I'm going to write here and what uh, ground is always ground so what Dan maps to the DTR is what I'm going to write here which is DSR so and CTS will always be to RTS so it's it's the same map but I'm just yeah it, actually I think this order is probably the same as well which I think it should be anyway So, oh, just a bit of flux. This is how it flux it. So you can see my, my cables. My cables should be a bit longer, just a, a bit longer. Maybe another thumbnail. Um, 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 so now I'm tinting it. Um, you want to tint them um, as a novice. Um, so my soldering iron wasn't hot enough. It just, it, I should have just cranked it up a bit longer and higher for a bit longer. Um, but anyway, yeah, you want to tint them um, as a novice because it, that's where you'll get your strength from, really. Um, yeah. So, but once once they're tinted, I didn't record after I tinted them. You kind of want to get rid of all that ex excess solder on on them because it won't fit through the holes. So, yeah, all that in, entails is just wiping it with the hot iron just to remove the excess um, they'll still be the, the tent will still be on it um, so okay so these are um, I turn to stop motion stop motion is probably better for, for this anyway uh, so he, this is how I map out um, my my board. Um, so what I'm doing is using the the table from above. I'm, I'm visually seeing what I have to do. So I go through. Um, um, I think I, st I start off with the right. So on the right, there's there's ground and the CTS. So that's uh, four is one, two, three, four, which is it says it here CTS. So, and I know it's a grey cable, so that's, it's just easier to do it this way. This is, this is pretty much how I did it last time as well. Um, yeah, and on the right side, it's the same. Uh, this is kind of a bad shot, but, uh, so yeah, I showed the top, um, but yeah, it's, that's all I'm doing. So here, I'm, I'm also writing up here pretty much what I'm doing there to make sure that it's double kind of double checking the whole thing um, if there's any mistakes it'll show up here because um, I've got my notes from ab above moved down to here and it should be aligned with the actual board uh, so that's blue so yeah that's five uh, green Okay, so, uh, so DS, DS, DSR number two, which is correct two. So the R, RXD five, one, two, three, four, five, which is correct. R, um, RTS seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, RTS, which is correct. Um, Here I've I've made a mistake here and I'm checking and I'm like well there's nine I I, I assume there was eight I assume there was eight uh, holes on the board um, which is wrong um, because eight is this one so I corrected that and yeah moved it down to nine 
So just watch that. That's that's why you keep checking to make sure it's you're soldering the right thing to the right place. That's probably the most important part. So this is why it's important to write and to visualize as well. So yep. Once I'm happy with that, I just feed the colors using this to the holes. So here I can I can see the color and the the whole numbers, and that's pretty much all I do. It's pretty. Uh, and I so here I've I've mapped out. Uh, like, what I'm doing here is I'm laying out. I'm I'm pushing the wires where they need to go. So here on the right side, there's two cables, the grey and I think the purple. Uh, I think purple was neutral uh, ground. Yeah, purple ground and the CTS grey, which is on port uh, four or hole four, I should say. So there's grey and purple on this side, and then all the other all the other cables are on the the left. So that's all I'm doing there, and just feeding it through. So I'm just feeding the cables through, uh, and I'm bending. I'm bending the the wire parts down so they they, they kind of locked in. Um, that way I, they don't come out that easy. So here I've got one that that doesn't want to go in properly, and yeah, and then I just bend bend the wire down so that just keeps them in place so none fall out it helps for when you're soldering um, I've got one loose and that's the the red one so yeah the red one is the the null one which isn't used in hindsight I should have soldered it somewhere on the board just to give it a bit more strength um, and, and you can see there's not much room here so it, in, in theory, I would have liked to have a bit more room, so all of this isn't literally on top of that chip, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's well insulated. Yeah, so yeah, you can see the loose wire. So here, it's under the magnifying glass, so... Um, I couldn't see what I was doing most of the time because the camera was in the way. The camera's actually looking down on the... On the the magnifying glass. See here, my, my the iron's not hot enough, so it's not melting. In, in hindsight, I should have just put it all the way. Um, but anyway, I've just burnt through so many of these things. I didn't want to burn out another one, so I'm trying to. Anyway, so yeah, it's not melting, so I'm just melting the solder. I'm kind of cheating, but I'm relying on on the the wires actually having enough tint that. That tinted solder is what is actually holding it in place. And it, at the end, you always check. You give it a little pull on each wire, and and it holds it. And if if it comes out, it comes out, and then you just redo it. It's no big deal. But you don't want a loose wire in there. Um, so I can't really see much. So yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just straightening the wire, giving it a bit of flux at the end of that. You don't really need flux, I don't think. These are pre-flux. There's I think they've got flux in the solder, in the solder, yeah. So right now I'm not, I'm not really thinking about what cables in what, I'm just uh, autopilot just trying to do each one and solder each one. Um, so I'm just pushing the cables down um, just enough to, to make sure that the wire, just the, the naked wire is in, in the hole, not plastic. Um, so that's all I'm doing. At the end I'll, I'll put all the, all the messy bits. So yeah, here, this is me clipping it. It's pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, and I clipped the, the last one and I just pushed the plastic through over. I should have, yeah, soldered it. So here I'm testing all of them to make sure that there's no shorts. And I, here I'm doing a, a little pull test to make sure that each cable is in properly. And, and yeah, and this is me um, with the 
you know, just visually checking that I've got the right color on the right port. Um, so yeah, that, it's a pretty simple job to do. It's not okay. So this is this is me testing it. So um, yeah, this is the net Eurozy just outputting, just counting up to four thousand, um, and it actually so so it, the green light is. Um, I think it's receiving, receiving from the PlayStation. The red is sending. So every time I push, I'm pushing the keyboard. I don't know if you can hear it, um, but when I push the keyboard, it, it it lights up the red light. That's it. Um, so I've got a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, I, I, I thought I put the slides in where I wrapped this one as well, but basically it's the same as that one. You, you just wrap them incrementally, like a little bit. Um, well, this one, oh, I don't think I took photos. This one, I just, yeah, I, I wrapped um, the top of it because like I said it was so close to the to the the electronics that I didn't want to short it so I just wrapped a lot of it um, and yeah and then you, you just wrap it tight tight and just keep wrapping it and that's it I've, I've never had a problem with this one I doubt I'll have a problem with that one as well um, well okay well thanks for watching uh, making the cable is fun and really easy um, the place programming on the PlayStation is fun not so much easy but yeah okay well if anyone has a question comment below or email me um yeah um have fun catch you next time